Hello and welcome to uh, another episode of Daily Drumming with Dunk. We're on Wednesday the 8th of April. The sun is still shining, so all good. Um, so, Wednesday is drum groove of the day. Um, actually, before we start, if uh, just a quick little reminder that if you are enjoying these lessons and you're finding them uh, useful, then obviously leave us some comments um, in the comments box. If anyone's feeling generous and they want to donate a little bit uh, just to basically uh, keep me alive while I can't go and work in schools during the coronavirus uh, nonsense, then there are links in the description where you can donate a little bit by PayPal or subscribe to my Patreon. Anything like that all helps. It's all good. Um, right, so drum groove of the week. We are going to look at a classic uh, drum groove that has been sampled thousands of times called the Amen Break or the Amen Break, whichever way you want to say it. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to play it for you first. Uh, I will put a link to this, um, this YouTube video in the description as well, because if you want to know a little bit about the history, about this groove, we can watch all of this because it lasts for six minutes. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but if I just put <coughs> the first bit on so you can actually hear what it sounds like. Um, there we go. In 1969, a drum solo that would shape the history of electronic music was born. The percussive loop that lasted 5.2 seconds has been sampled more than 2,000 times. Drummed by the late Gregory C. Coleman, it featured on the Amen Brother, the B-side to the funk and soul group, the Winston single, Colour History. Okay, so that is that is the little uh, four bar loop. Um, so yeah, I mean a random piece of drumming about f five seconds long from 1969, the year I was born. Um, yes, I know I don't look that old. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean randomly it was like I say it was on a B side, and um, it got. I mean, if you've watched this video through, there's a bit of history on uh, kind of like it was picked up as hip hop sample and this kind of thing. Um, so let's learn how to play it. So what I'm going to do is going to break it down into um, kind of three ex or four exercises. It's a four bar loop. Um, the fourth exercise will be the whole putting the whole thing together. So if we look at the first one, it's kind of complicated-ish. Sorry, there you can see my really massively hairy knee <laughs> on that. I'll try and keep it out of camera shot because you don't want to see that. Um, so we've got straight eighth notes on the hi hat going all the way through. Um, and really, if I mean, if if you're not if you've not kind of covered these um, note reading things here with dotted eighth notes and sixteenths written like this, don't worry, it doesn't matter. You can pretty much ignore all the lines and the and the notes and the dots and stuff. Don't ignore the notes because you got to play the notes. Um, so all you got to do is just use your hi hat kind of as your template to take you through. So we've got eighth notes, straight eighth notes. So the important thing is that your hi hat is evenly spaced out going all the way through. So just one and two. And okay, so the first three are fairly straightforward. You've got a bass drum with a hi hat, bass drum with a hi hat, snare drum with a hi hat. This snare drum needs to land exactly halfway between those two hi hats. So if we're playing this bit, you're just going to be going okay, evenly spaced out. Same with this hi hat, halfway between that hi hat beat and that hi hat beat. This bass drum halfway in the gap there, and that snare drum kind of halfway between the end hi hat and the first hi hat right at the end. So if I play it really slowly first, it's going to sound like this. That one again, snare didn't work. Okay, even slower. And two, and a uh, three, E, and a uh, four, and a. Uh. So, just in terms of kind of coordination, what we're looking at here, you sort of got a right, left, right. When we get to this bit, you're going to play your hi hat and the bass drum, immediately followed by a bass drum. And then here, you've kind of got a right, left, right, and then going back to the bass drum. So if you're having a few issues with those two, those few bits, just kind of work on those bits um, separately. So just like, and then they, I then put it all together. Okay, don't try and go too fast too soon, which is always the biggest mistake everybody always makes. Um, start it slow. I mean, even if you've got to go, You know, that kind of speed, don't worry about going that slow. What you want to watch out for is that you don't kind of go, you know, kind of lose that 
evenly spacing out of your hi-hat because that is the bit that's going to keep you together. Once you've got it up to speed, it's going to sound like this. Okay, so that in itself is a pretty cool groove, just the first part. So that's the first of the second bar of the four bar loop of the whole break. The second bar is, is fairly similar. If I kind of leave both on so we just compare, the beats one and beat two, uh, get it up on the screen, wrong one, that one. If we get it put on the screen, we can see here, beat one, beat two, up to here is exactly the same. In fact, up to here is exactly, in fact, up to here is exactly the same, up to the end of beat three. It's just the end bit that's different. And this bit's actually a bit easier. There's a, there's a lot less going off. So we've lost this bass drum now, so that one's gone. And what we've done is we've moved the snare drum, which we've kind of displaced it, what's called displacing it, rather than being on beat four to the end of beat four. So it now sounds like this slowly. So it's one and two and uh, three e and four and. Again, I mean, if you're thinking what you're playing here, it's basically just like right, left, right, left. Same with this one, actually. When I said right, left, right there, you can think of that as right, left, right, left. And then straight to that bass drum, so when it's faster. Okay, and displacing that snare drum on that fourth beat is quite a cool little uh, little trick you can do every now and then. It messes with people's kind of listening and thinking, oh, where's beat four gone? Then it, when it comes back in, it gives it a nice funky kind of feel. So if I play uh, exercise one going into exercise two, we get this. Let's do it again. This time, we'll do it correctly. Okay, and then if we go down to exercise three. Now this one's a little bit different on the first bit. Uh, so basically kind of what we're taking is beat three. Okay, so all of this bit here from beat three from the first exercise, and we're putting that on beat one. Okay, so it's the same coordination that we had on beat three previously. Okay, so there's nothing new in terms of coordination. We're just kind of chopping it around a little bit. Uh, beat two is the same as it was before. Beat three is the same as beat three up here. Okay, or beat three and beat four, in fact, is the same. The only difference is we're putting uh, an open hi hat on there. So we get. And let me get rid of my Facebook notification. You're welcome, Charlotte. <laughs> Okay, and that is exercise three. So then down the bottom here, we get the whole thing. So slowly. And up to speed. Yes, I put the open hi-hat in wrong on that second one. So if I just play this, um, I'll play the loop of it again and just go back so we just follow it through uh, with the notes. Was born. The percussive loop that lasted 5.2 seconds has been sampled more than 2,000 times. Drummed by the late Gregory C. Coleman, it featured on the Amen Brother. The B side to the funk. Okay, so hopefully you could hear that. Um, oh, hello. Yeah, so hopefully you could hear the, that was uh, basically, well, not basically, it's exactly the same. They just kind of faded off a little bit before that last uh, snare drum, but uh, is there. So that is how to play the Amen Break, the Amen Break, however you want to play it. Classic bit of drumming. It's literally in thousands of songs. It might have been speeded up, might have been slowed down, might have been mashed up and done different things with it, but it's kind of like one of the grooves that kind of started off sampling. Um, there's, uh, I mean, there's that. There's When the Levy Breaks by Led Zeppelin, which I might do actually as Groove of the Week next week because that's another groove that's been massively sampled thousands of times. Um, there we go. See me on the screen. Um, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of a trickier one, uh, that one, so it might take a bit of time just to get yourself up to speed with that, but it's a really good one for kind of like the coordination between your hands, between your hands and your feet and so on. 
and also uh, a great groove and you can also like chop it up mix different bits around as well with it so there's a lot you can do with it so that should keep you going for today um so thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for part one of uh, song of the week cheers <laughs>